Hello, and welcome to Now Where Were We? A series of short videos about the history of Olympia, Lacey, and surrounding areas. Your host for this program is Deborah Ross. In this series, Deb takes us to locations that inform us about the history of our community. She also visits with local historians. We welcome your feedback and suggestions. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Now Where Were We? An ongoing series of videos about the history of Olympia, Lacey, and surrounding areas. I'm Deborah Ross, and today I'm once more in the port of Olympia, near the corner of Capitol Way and State Avenue, or as it was originally known, Third Avenue and Main Street. Where we're standing now can rightfully be called the cradle not only of Olympia, but of Washington Territory. This was the original settled area, both commercially, politically, and socially, as Olympia began to be developed by its original American citizens. Where I'm standing today was the home of the Pacific House. It was operated by Rebecca Howard, who was a well-known restaurateur and innkeeper and an African American. Mrs. Howard was one of the most prominent citizens of Olympia in its early days. Just north of here was the site of the original territorial legislature in 1853. The building had originally been built uh, by John Parker and Sam Coulter as a restaurant called the Gold Bar. But soon after that, Edmund Sylvester, one of the co-founders of Olympia, built a second story, and that's where the territorial legislature was held. In addition to Mrs. Howard establishment as well as the territorial legislature, there were a couple of stores in this area. One was operated by a Louis Bettman, one of the earliest Jewish families to arrive here just north of where the Territorial Legislature building was. And then just south of here was the first bank, the George uh, Barnes Bank Building, which is the oldest surviving brick building in downtown Olympia. Of course, no new community in America could survive without a newspaper, and the first newspaper and printing press were located just a block east of here. It later became the home of the Washington Standard, a longtime fixture of early Olympia. A number of heritage plaques mark important locations in this area, including a plaque honoring the site of the first territorial legislature, Another one uh, marking the location where the first Masonic Hall was no located, just around the corner. And we're going to now take a stroll over to a third marker, which marked where the Custom House was. In early days of American settlement, Olympia was by far the largest community on Puget Sound. And so, in 1851, the first custom house was established here on this spot, a couple of blocks from the territorial legislature. It is also thought that the first territorial governor, Isaac Stevens, lived approximately where the Olympia Center is behind me. If so, it is here that Quamus, brother of Nisqually leader Leshai, was murdered by vigilantes in an upstairs room. Quamuth had been brought in for trial during the Indian skirmishes of the 1850s. He had been housed in a bedroom of Governor Stevens' home, under guard. In the middle of the night, in the darkness, he was stabbed to death. The murder was never solved. Olympia experienced a population exodus in the 1850s, due to the California gold rush and concerns over Indian hostilities. When the town finally began to grow again in the 1860s, the center of town moved further south to 4th Avenue and Capitol Way. This part of town began to experience a decline. 
In the 1880s, the town of Olympia passed an ordinance declaring certain activities to be nuisances. These included houses of ill fame, brothels, dance halls, saloons, gambling, and privies emitting noxious odors. These activities were not illegal, however. They would be stopped only after complaint and notification to the owners or perpetrators. Such complaints appear to have been rare for the part of town north of 4th Avenue, which began to resemble a Wild West scene. A newspaper article explained that city authorities simply extracted a tribute from madams or saloon keepers to be left alone. The common wisdom was that it was better to have a district than to have these activities spread throughout Olympia. A further ordinance was passed that set aside the blocks north of 4th Avenue for taverns and associated businesses. By the turn of the century, fire insurance maps show this area teeming with saloons, dance halls, gambling joints, and so-called female boarding houses, FB for short, a euphemism for brothels. Newspaper accounts are full of instances of drunkenness, stabbings, theft, and even murders. A sensational murder involves prostitute Leela Page, who is fatally axed by a jealous lover. Transcripts from the trial paint a vivid picture of life in what was called the dead zone, the red light district, or the restricted district. By 1902, a series of photographs by famed photographer Ashel Curtis shows the Gold Bar, the Pacific House, and Bettman's store in dilapidated conditions, stark reminders of a once vibrant part of town. In 1909, several businessmen successfully petitioned to have the restricted district moved one block north to north of Olympia Avenue. When you bear in mind that the shoreline was at that time just one block north of there, this would have limited the restricted district to one block. By 1910, the restricted district had disappeared and the unsavory businesses dispersed. One year later, the Carlisle and Phil added 23 blocks to the port area, setting the stage for its industrial development. The Port of Olympia area has been undergoing a renaissance in the last decade or two with many new restaurants and stores and galleries taking the place not only of those old houses of prostitution but of the industrial development that existed in the early part of the 20th century. So when you enjoy a fine seafood dinner, raise a glass of beer at one of the local breweries enjoy a performance or class at the Olympia Center, or wander through the galleries and stores at Percival Landing. Keep your ears and eyes open for the ghosts of those early American settlers in Olympia and for the denizens of its Wild West days. Till next time, see you later. I'm Deborah Ross.